In this video, we'll explore the different types of equalizer, show how each are used and discover their pros and cons. Demonstrate the general principles of the parametric equalizers. We'll use the free M Equalizer VST plugin. Parametric equalizers provide several bands. Each band has a filter, which affects the frequency content. A typical example is a peak filter shown here. We have enabled the band by double clicking on it, and it can be disabled the same way. Dragging the band changes its gain and frequency, and you can also adjust the cue using the width control or mouse wheel. The cue, often called resonance, controls the shape of the filter. Narrow filters are great for targeting problematic frequencies. Note that narrow filters often produce an unnatural sound due to their resonant characteristics. By clicking the right mouse button on the band, we reveal additional settings and filter types. Let's walk through the filter types. We already know the peak filter, which is used the most, so let's look at the low shelf filter. Low shelf filters are ideal for controlling the low frequency content of the audio, the bass. Similarly, high shelf filters are designed to control high frequency content, the treble. Q controls the resonance of the filters. With narrow filters, we create big resonant hills, which usually sound unnatural. If we need a steeper shelf filter, it's often better to combine multiple shelf filters instead of using a high Q setting to avoid the resonance. Low pass filters are designed to remove everything above a specific frequency. Gain has no effect on this filter. The default slope or roll-off is 12 decibels per octave, which means that, for example, if 1 kHz is attenuated or reduced by 20 decibels, 2 kHz will be by 32 decibels. We can obtain steeper filters by using the order parameter. There is also the so-called single pole filter available which has a slope of just 6 decibels per octave. The Q has no effect on single pole filters. A 6 decibels per octave slope isn't as precise as 12 decibels per octave, but usually sounds more natural. High pass filters are similar to low pass, but they reduce everything below the specified frequency. Band pass filters are used more for special effects. They look like a combination of low pass and high pass filters. Finally, notch filters remove the specific frequency completely and also attenuate frequencies around it. They are especially useful for removing problematic frequencies, such as the common 50 Hz hum from an electrical network. As well as dragging the band point, you can access the parameters from the settings window. This allows you to type in a parameter value directly by holding shift and clicking on it. Now let's hear how the filters actually sound. This unnatural resonance is caused by a narrow filter. With notch filters, the narrowness actually sounds good because the filter affects only a small part of the spectrum.
Melder production parametric equalizers contain advanced features, such as harmonics. This works by creating copies of the original filter at higher octaves, where the most significant harmonics occur. This can be used not only for special effects, but also for more advanced audio restoration. Harmonics are present in most sounds and can produce unwanted noises like hum or cymbal resonances. Control the amount of harmonic, the number of them, the interval between them, and even enable or disable them individually. Melder production equalizers have many more features to speed up your workflow. First, there are areas which help you to navigate the spectrum. There are several predefined areas to choose from, or you can create and save your own. The Auto Listen feature mutes the other bands and lets you listen to the part of the spectrum you are affecting when dragging a band. Equalizers also have an integrated advanced analyzer. The analyzer can help you find potential problems, but you should always let your ears be the main judge. Let's check a few advanced parameters. Smoothness can make the graph easier to understand. Averaging slows the movements down by showing analysis over longer periods of time. Opacity simply controls how visible the graph is. Super resolution is a quite unique feature which improves the usually poor resolution in low frequencies but keeps the speed in higher ones. Deharmonize is yet another unique feature which attempts to remove harmonics from the graph to make it easier to understand. It is often useful in finding the fundamentals of the problematic signals. And then there are several more advanced parameters. The analyzer can also measure infinite averages, temporary maximums and infinite maximums, all in the same view. If you want to compare a graph, you can just click on the copy button, enable comparison and use the paste button. For example, if you want to compare multiple tracks, Simply enable infinite average on both tracks and then copy and paste the analysis from one equalizer to the other one's comparison. There is also a sonogram view which shows the same information but instead of a graph it uses colors. The colors are fully adjustable and there are several presets but as usual you can also make your own. There is also an integrated sonogram driven by the same engine and settings as the analyzer. The sonogram provides a view of the spectrum in time. Here you can see the bass track, for example. It is now much easier to use the equalizer to adjust the bass. Adjusting the bass changes the sonogram. Another useful feature is the dry-wet controller. 
which allows us to control all bands at once. Although not normally possible with minimum phase equalizers, it is emulated on the filter basis. A gain is provided as most filters change the level. Soft saturation provides additional tube-like warming, often included in hardware equalizers. All bands and all basic settings can be reached from the panel below. Let's take a look at a more advanced parametric equalizer, the M Auto Equalizer. This plugin is based on audio analysis, so the analyzer is always enabled. The layout also differs slightly, with parameters such as smoothness available from the main screen. However, its main feature is automatic equalization. Here's a simple way to use it. First, analyze the audio using the Analyze Target button. Then choose the source. We could analyze this also, but for this example we will use one of the presets. The red line shows the source, or the spectral profile, of how we want our audio to sound. The blue line shows our current audio spectral profile. If we press the Equalize button, M Auto Equalizer will set up the bands for us automatically. If the effect is too strong, we can lower the dry wet setting. 50% is usually a good choice. This method works whether matching the overall spectral content of songs for an album or as an effect for individual instruments. For example, equalizing drums is often a real challenge, but M Auto Equalizer can make this process much easier and quicker. A linear phase is a more advanced approach to equalization. Let's look at M Auto Equalizer Linear Phase. Its difference lies in the mode parameter. In normal mode, the equalizer produces the same sound as M Auto Equalizer, but in the default linear phase mode, it is very different. Phase equalizers do not introduce phase shift, so they are ideal for processing complicated material such as an orchestra. However, this type of EQ is not suited to all types of audio, and they also introduce latency, so they are unusable in real time. Our last parametric equalizer is called Equalizer Linear Phase. As the name suggests, it is similar to M Equalizer, but it provides linear phase processing. M Freeform Equalizer uses a quite different approach. Instead of using bands to adjust the equalizer, you can simply draw the response you want. This equalizer can theoretically provide any response, but at the expense of latency and a potential decrease in audio quality. You can, for example, draw the perfect low pass, but as this is not naturally possible, the specialized FFT-based processing will introduce ringing. The equalizer can provide up to 64 decibels attenuation or amplification, which is controlled by the range parameter. The plugin is ideal for extreme audio correction tasks. Finally, M Freeform Analog EQ is a cross between the freeform and parametric approach. We use it in the same way as M Freeform Equalizer, by simply drawing the response we want. But instead of FFT processing, 
the plugin automatically adjusts a set of filters to provide a similar response. So although you rarely get the exact drawn response, you do get the closest approximation achievable using analog filters. This usually gives a higher audio quality and with no latency. The number of bands controls the number of filters the plugin can use. So the more filters we employ, the closer the EQ will resemble our drawn response. M Freeform Analog EQ is not a surgical equaliser, but it does provide an alternative way to equalise audio without having to worry about parametric filters.